That is the note that will mentally stay with me forever until the end of this match. <laughs> okay. What's up, tricksters? My name is Charlatan. I'm an all-time Radiant player, the king of solo queue, and the number one most requested Valorant coach. Today, we're doing a coaching session with Platinum Omen Main that thinks he's way too stupid for playing Valorant, and that he will never improve or reach higher ranks. So that's why we're here today to prove him wrong. This session will split into two videos, VOD review and backseat coaching, and I highly recommend you to watch everything from beginning to the end because there's a lot of useful knowledge which you won't find anywhere else and if you enjoyed this type of content be sure to leave a like comment subscribe and hit the bell icon to boost the youtube's algorithm and if you're interested in coaching yourself make sure to join my official discord server from description down below other than that enjoy in this one baby let's start first with one very simple rule that i need you to remember for the essentially rest of your life and rest of your Valorant career, so to say. Uh, essentially in Valorant, both attackers and defenders side have the same utility, same available guns. And uh, in Valorant, the attacker side players have the advantage because you're, if you execute fast, aggressively, one area of the map with your team, you're essentially pushing the site where there's maximum two or three enemies there. Five men aggressively pushed towards the same objective makes more sense than splitting the map or playing the default. Now, what is the absolutely number one best strategy to perform on Fracture with any team composition? You always want to do a 4-1 aggressive split. You tell four of your teammates to push with you through the arcade area of the map aggressively and one of your teammates is lurking through the B main area and trying to catch the enemies off guard through the B main. When it comes to playing Omen in the first round like this, I always purchase the Frenzy, two smokes, two shrouded steps and you want to smoke instantly. As the round starts, you're smoking this location, from this position you're smoking this location and you're pushing aggressively with your teammates and clearing everything one by one. Now, this is a very important part. How do you use the ropes to go up on the tower? Something that players never get right. A lot of the players, what they do when they're going up these ropes, they go up the ropes like this. Why is this bad? Simply because when you're at this moment of time, you cannot shoot the enemy precisely. I mean, yes, there is still accuracy on the ropes, etc, etc, but it is not that fast of a peak, you know, like uh, ropes are kind of slowing down your movement a bit and uh, you want to do the following. Place your crosser, you know, for this most common position where the enemies are, jump on this ledge and then perform a fast Ferrari swing from this wall here where the enemies don't see you. It is much more fluid, better, faster, end of the story. Now, in a second round on Fracture, essentially on any map, if you lose the first round, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. The whole point of an eco round is to damage the enemy's economy and preserve your own economy. Any gun that you take from enemies, any shield that you take from enemies, if you plant the spike, it's a win for us. If you lose the round, doesn't matter. If you win the round, great bonus, love it, I don't complain. You will have to smoke the cross. Yeah, very good. And we are going in the plant at the back of the site. Ooh, he here, you should have jumped uh, into the site simply because you don't know if the enemies are already maybe in the CT. Like, uh, God knows how fast they rotated, but it's okay. We got a plant, we got three kills. Even if you lose this round, nobody gives a shit. Solid, solid. And once again, in this type of rounds, it is absolutely stupid to split the map. When the enemies are eco, halby, or they are playing a bonus round, you should never split ever in your life, on any map that you're playing. Why are we giving these free kills to the Reyna right now that has a Sheriff? Why is your Reyna now alone in the B main, potentially dying from the Chamber 1D in the head? Like, really, really stupid. <laughs> First of all, when the enemies are playing a bonus round, eco round, when you're playing Omen, there is almost never a reason for you to do any type of an aggressive execute. But, uh, if you already wanted to do some kind of an ag aggressive play, what you can do, you can maybe do a one-way smoke there and try from this position. Actually, you don't even need to jump. That is one execute that I love to do. And then from this position, you can maybe drop down on the enemy's fa faces, try to surprise the enemies, etc, etc. Another thing that you can do 
is you, you can always smoke the top of the site and try to teleport inside of that smoke. You can try to position smokes that look like this and then try to teleport inside of that smoke like this and from this position try to, you know, surprise the enemies and execute the site. You need to find more cover for yourself. Like you, you, you cannot just teleport in the middle of nowhere expecting that you're gonna stay alive. Especially since you don't have a smoke here, you don't have any smokes here and you, you've wasted your flesh, you know, for that this area of the map. One one quick tip. Whenever whenever you see uh, in your match on Fracture that enemy jet has the ultimate, always call for this type of a play. You tell one of your teammates to watch this angle from this position. And you teleport on top of this position and watch this angle for the first, let's say, five or six seconds of the round. Because the most common play that the jet players do, they're gonna use the double updraft from here to kill you there, or they're gonna do a double updraft from this position to kill you up there. Uh-huh. She actually did it. She actually did it. We heard the updraft on this position here, and if you actually told your teammates that Jet is gonna do that, that was an easy kill for our chamber with a headhunter. You need to check the back of the... Ooh, listen, 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 listen. You cannot teleport in this type of a way. Like, it's, it's extremely, extremely dangerous to teleport in these type of smokes. Why? Because the enemy can literally be sitting in this specific angle in, and in this specific smoke without any problems. Uh, I'm going for an aggressive play on top of the B tower. I'm always creating a cubby position on which I can actually teleport. I do the smoke like this and I leave this angle open so that I can actually teleport here and then I'm moving into the smoke. This is much safer and better than what you did right now. You'll but, see why I laughed. <laughs> but this TP was, was you know, insanity. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what the fuck is gonna happen, you know, like... Uh, I, I see the future. You need to flash the A-Main area. Like, if there is a jet with Operator Chamber with Operator, I'm probably going to rip my eyes apart if, if one of your teammates dies again. Yeah, no, this game I uh, got pretty tilted and gave, like, no fucks and was kind of just doing whatever. Okay, 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 okay. You see how this is 10 times better than what you did in all of the previous rounds. Plus, that, that smoke... Listen, when you're pushing the A main area of the map, you always want to do the flash for your teammates first and then the smoke. Uh, because okay. flesh is enough, you know, like, uh, but if, if you think that sm smoke is necessary, do the smoke as well, fuck it. What I'm seeing in your gameplay with Omen is that a lot of times you, you end up in these positions where you can die from two or more angles in the same time. Right now, you need to cut off either the sand position or the tower position. Tower position would make more sense because probably your teammates are also going to follow you into the sand, you know. Just to have some position where you can maybe teleport, dodge the enemy's utility, split the enemies in a 1v1 gunfights, you get a point, you know. Whenever you're getting uh, breach halted, your instant reaction should always be pulling out your shrouded steps and trying to teleport somewhere. Another question. If mm -hmm. you're mid-teleport, does... does a... Would the ult not hit you? Yes, or? yes, you, you, you can actually dodge the breach ultimate with your shrouded steps with Omen. If you pick a right timing. Like, basically, uh, when I see that ultimate is here, I'm doing my teleport and, and you will dodge it completely. Do you know what is the best uh, play on this position? Is to use your smoke as a one-way here and to cover up yourself. And essentially, like, uh, you're trying to pick a right moment to actually get out of the smoke behind the enemies and try to surprise them and kill them. And also what you can do, you can use this position as well to, you know, fuck up the enemies that are getting into the site. And they're never going to expect you on this location. The guys in the city. <laughs> nah, nah, the breach is using a vacuum on the attacker side. Like, like this is this is this is some kind of a joke, man. Literally, like, and we're losing against this dude. So here, even if I'm playing in this position with a judge, I will still do the flash for my allies from here to here. 
I will still give them the smoke as you did. That was a good job. And that's it. Always prioritize the gunfights that your teammates are taking. Like, uh, if you're already close to these gunfights. A bit unnecessary, but, you know, good good kill. Ooh, if, if, you, if you teleported there, that would be insane. Okay, not bad. Good, good. This was a solid round. Solid round. Now, in this round, there is a way to know what the enemies are gonna do. And there is a way, like, uh, how you should position yourself. The number one pattern is the so-called AB pattern of pushing. Essentially, like, players are trying to push every single time a different area of the map, thinking that they are unpredictable. In, in, but in reality, they're not unpredictable, they're retarded. Uh, the second uh, thing, the second rule, uh, when it comes to your positioning on, on, on defender's side, that you can use in the first, like, four to five rounds uh, uh, of every match on defender's side, is the rule of fear. Players are usually afraid to push the site on which they didn't have success in the previous round. So based on these two rules right now, the highest chances are, simply because Valorant is a gambling game, that enemies will go B. After this VOD review, we did one game of backseat coaching, which ended up being one of the funniest things that I've ever experienced as a Valorant coach. But I'm going to showcase you that in the second part of this small series.